So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to take one of the most important concepts taught by the Alter Rebbe, and we're going to apply it in three different ways to the coming month of Elo, followed by the holidays of Tishrei. And that concept is, it's a very simple concept, but it, it, the ramifications are, are so wide. The idea of living with the times. The Alter Rebbe gave over this idea and it, it was understood and is still understood, meaning that we should always see what's happening in our own lives and in the life of the world, in the reality of the world, according to the Torah portion of the week, and also the, the holiday that is coming. Because almost every month has, has some kind of holiday or significant event. And so living with the times means to connect to that energy and to apply it to ourselves. Every Parsha in the Torah to take it and look at what's happening in our own lives and what's happening around the world. And people who do this, I can't say it happens like every day all the time, but usually there's always some incredible revelation about what's happening in our own life or the, the politics of the world or the, the news of the world as applies to the Parsha. So we're gonna take this concept of living with the times and we're gonna look at it from three different angles, all related to Elul and the coming holidays of Tishrei. And I'm doing this especially because I, I'm not gonna be teaching for the next three weeks. And after that, as I said, we will probably be changing subjects. So I wanted to try in a sense to get um, as much in as we could. So we're gonna start with connecting this time of year to the Parshiot. And we have really an amazing, amazing continuum of Parshiot that give us instruction of how to get the most out of this time of year, the introspection of Elo the tshuva of Elul, the preparation for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Hoshana Rabbah, Shmini Yetzirah, Simchat Torah. And so we're going to go back. This parsha is parsha Re'e. We're going to go back one week to Ekev. Now, Rosh Chodesh Elul will always come right, right before or right after parsha Re'e. But if we go back one week, it's Ekev, Bahaya Ekev Tishma'un. And it will be if you listen. And then it says that the, 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 the bracha that you'll get is if you listen to God and do the mitzvah. And the opposite will be if you don't listen to God and you turn to other gods. Then what we'll call the, the klala, the, the, the curse will come upon you. But everyone points out the word ekev, bahoya ekev tishma'un, is not a, kind of like a, a normal word to use in this kind of uh, grammatical situation. So everyone makes uh, drushes on it that the word ekev comes from the word heel, the heel of the foot. So we know that the, the time before Mashiach comes, is called Iklika de Mashiach, the footsteps of the Mashiach. So when Parshat Ekev comes, and we discussed this last week already, already from Tuba'av, we can be saying, Lushana Tova, Kativa Vachatima Tova, wishing each other a good year and a good inscription and, and sealing in the book of life. So we can interpret Vahoya Ekev Tishma'un. And it will be when you hear, can you hear the new year coming? Can you hear the footsteps of a new year coming? That was last week already. 
And because already it was Tuba of, and our whole class last week was about this idea that from Tuba of, even from Tisha B'Av, the, the seed of the new year is already being planted. This week's parsha is Re'e. Re'e anochi noten lifnechem hayom bracha uklala. Look, see, I am putting before you today a blessing and a curse. So this is always right about, right around Rosh Chodesh Elo. And so what we're being told is, everyone, open your eyes. A new year is coming. And God is putting in front of us a blessing and a curse. And as it will say in a couple of weeks in the Torah, you should choose life. In other words, as we start the month of Elo, the, the, the choices are in front of us. The choice to do tshuva, the choice to use the time of Elo to look at our lives, or we could not look and just be oblivious to living with the times. So that's Parsha Re'e. The beginning of Elo is open your eyes. A new year is coming, and each person has to own up and take responsibility for their lives. The judgment that comes down in Rosh Hashanah is mostly based on our input into the judgment. The following week is Parshat Shoftim, uh, judges. Shoftim v'shotrim titem l'cha v'chol sh'arecha. Put judges and enforcers of the law in all of your gates. So this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing during Chodesh Elo, is judging ourselves. And it's brought down in Hasidut that if a person takes advantage of the month of Elo and does the, the work of tshuva and introspection of being honest with oneself and trying to fix things and rectify things and make the, the proper changes, that as it were, there's not much for the heavenly court to do. Because in a sense, we already executed our own judgment for the good, for the good. So that's the idea of put judges and the enforcers of law. And this is a very, very important thing is that so many of us make New Year's resolutions and we mean well and we, we really mean to change. But the question is, where are the enforcers? Do we set up a, a program, a, a system to actually implement the New Year's resolutions? In other words, a person could make a resolution I have to exercise more. I just am not exercising enough. This is one example. And yes, I'm going to do it. I know how important it is. But the next step is, okay, this, these days I'm going to the gym, or these days I'm riding my bike, or these days I'm running or speed walking, and I'm going to stick to it, and I start doing it. Those are the enforcers. So shoftim v'shotrim titen l'cha b'chol sh'arecha. And it's brought down in Hasidut, in all of your gates. So it's brought down that the, the face has seven gates. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and one mouth. These are the gates of perception. These are the gates into the soul. This is how the soul sees and hears and smells and speaks. These are called the levushim of the soul, thought, speech, and action. And they're coming through what are called the gates of the face. So that's Parshat Shoftim. Then we get to Ki Melchama Al Oivecha. 
when you go to war against your enemy, again, it's, it's talking about physical enemies, real wars. But of course, in Hasidut, it explains this is talking to each individual. And during the month of Elul, if, we're gonna, if we want to do tshuva, it's not a simple process. Sometimes it's going to war. Who is our enemy? The Yetzirah that negative voice in our head saying, you can't change, you've tried to change, it didn't work. You'll never amount to anything, you failed a hundred times, why try again? Just take it easy. So that's when you go to war against your enemy. In other words, to make real changes in life is, is like a battle. And so we go to war with the intention of winning. And it says, after that, it says uh, that God will give over your enemy into your hands. But that's if we go to war. If we don't go to war, then there's no enemy to be given over in our hands. So we have to take the, the first step towards change. I mean, like it's sometimes we have to pray to Hashem for the strength to, to change. That's more than legitimate. We all need that strength. But ultimately, we have to take the step. With all the help that God will give us, still, we have to take the step. The next parsha, we're getting closer to Rosh Hashanah now, is V'haya ki tavo ela aretz. And it will be when you come into the land. So we're told that when a parsha begins with the word vihaya, it's lashon simcha. And here it's talking about coming into the land of Israel. Vahaya kitavo el arts. When you come into the land. So this is so important. We're getting towards Rosh Hashanah. Let's say we've we've opened our eyes in Ra'e. We we started judging ourselves. We put policemen on ourselves. We go to war against our enemy. But this Parsha is telling us something very important. What about Simcha? We can't lose track, even if we're at war with our Yetzer, we can't lose track of doing it with a sense of Simcha. And I don't know about anyone else. I grew up in a uh, somewhere between a reform and conservative upbringing. And when I think of my experiences as a young child and as a, as a teenager of going to shul on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the word that comes to my mind is somber. It, it was like this heavy, Energy. Now, don't get me wrong, Rosh Hashanah to young kids go the days of awe. There's no doubt it is it's serious business. Our lives are on the line. But I remember it as being like, like heavy, somber, sad. Anyone who's been in a Hasidic community for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's no less serious but it's full of joy. And the nigunim and the nusach is, it's so elevated, so inspiring. And again, Yom Kippur, I, we, we talked about this with Tuba. The Mishnah says there were no two days as joyous in the Jewish year as Tuba and Yom Kippur. We're fasting, we're not eating, we're in shul all day. But it, we're getting atonement. We're, we're getting cleansed. We're being forgiven. Like, what joy. So before Rosh Hashanah, don't forget to hold on to Simcha. And then the week before Rosh Hashanah, it's always, always Parshat Nitzavim. Atem Nitzavim hayom kuchem lifnei Hashem elokecha. And you are standing today, all of you, before Hashem, your God. This is what we always read before Rosh Hashanah. And 
this is, the Zohar says, this is talking about Rosh Hashanah. What's the Hayom? What's the today? You are standing today, all of you before God. Now, the truth is, every day we stand before God. Every day. And in, in the Torah, this was the last day of Moshe's life. This was Zion Adar. Nonetheless, the Zohar says this verse is talking about Rosh Hashanah. Because that's when a person has the most awareness of standing before God. Again, we, it, we can experience it anytime. But there is something about Rosh Hashanah of feeling that we are standing before God. So that's, that's the part that we always read before. So we could see that, that the flow of Parshiyot, it, it's, it's like instruction of how to enter into new, a new year. So one of the meanings of Kulchem, you are standing, all of you, today. So all of you, the, the simple meaning is all of Israel, and in Rosh Hashanah, even in our prayers, we say the whole world passes before God. So that's the kulchem, all of you. But another interpretation is it's talking to each individual. When, when you stand before God on Rosh Hashanah, it has to be all of you. Not 80%, not 90%. But 100% of you has to be aware and present before God. Okay, so that was our first idea of living with the times. Now, I'm not sure we're going to get to all three. So I'm going to go to the other one, which is a longer one. And that is... Cycles of time. Our whole Jewish lifestyle is based on being aware of cycles of time. The most basic one is we work for six days and it's Shabbos. This is the cycle that we live within. This is the context of a Jewish life. Then we have, that's in days. In weeks, we have the seven weeks of counting the Omer, where we're, we literally count the days for seven weeks. We're aware that we're in a seven-week cycle. And there's a cycle of months. The three pilgrimage holidays, Aliyah to Regal, all happen within the first seven months of the year. Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot is all in the first seven months of the year. That is a cycle in itself also. Here in Eretz Yisrael, in another five weeks is Shemitah. This is also in Eretz Yisrael, there's just like six days you work and the seventh you rest. In Eretz Yisrael, there is a cycle that is, it's, it's alive, it, it's real. You work the land for six years, and in the seventh, you uh, rest. And I know that very, very well, because I, I have a very, very extensive um, yard. And I'm out there every day now doing things that I, I, I would spread out, but I have to get them done before Shemitah, because you can't do them during Shemitah. You can't plant during Shemitah. You can't prune during Shemitah. You can't fertilize during Shemitah. You can't dig. All these kind of things. So you have to do it now. So I'm just saying that this is a, a, a living cycle. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to have to do it fairly quickly. But right now, I'm going to count. There are nine different cycles of time between now and the end of Simchas Torah. And each one is important 
And each one has great meaning when we are aware of it and, and bring it into our consciousness. So two of them we did already last week, and I'll just, I'll just review very quickly, is that we talked about this idea of 45 days before Rosh Hashanah is Tuba of, and that the, the, the word um, of thought is Choshev Ma, what, thinking of essence. Ma is what or essence. And we brought the tradition that uh, when God wanted to create the world, the thought of Israel arose first. And so from Tuba'av to Chav Hei Elo, which is the first day of creation, is 40 days. And for those who were here last week, remember that this is connected to the tradition that when a, when a soul is about to come in the world, 40 days before the formation of the fetus, a a bot call, a voice from heaven, calls out, this one is meant for this one, as far as marriage. And so we learned that on Tuba Av till Chaf He Elo, on Tuba is 40 days before the creation of the world. And we learned that when God wanted to create the world, the thought of Israel arose first. So what it means is Israel and Hashem are soulmates. God is calling out to us on Tuba. Remember, Tuba was when couples got together, when the, when the young women went out to the vineyards and, and danced, and men came and shiduchim were made. So the greatest shiduch is a Kaddish Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. So that's a 40 day period from Tuba'av till uh, Chav Hei Elo. And then we learned that until Rosh Hashanah, it's there are 45 days. And that is for Choshev Ma. God was thinking of the essence. Already on Tuba'av, God is thinking of the essence. So the important thing of this is that already the energy of the new year is happening. That's what we do in the Parsha already in Ekev, last week's Parsha. Can you hear the new year coming? So we're already in this 40 and 45 day period where part of the introspection is for each one of us to go very deep in our neshama and connect to our, what's called the Shorish Neshama, the root of our soul, and to connect in a primordial way. So that's why this time period is, is like, as it were, pre-creation. But the soul comes from pre-creation, because the soul is an is a actual part of God above. And so that's one of the deepest shuvas that we can do during this time period is to really contemplate the shorish of our neshama as a part of God above. Now, there's another, we mentioned already that there's a seven week period of counting the Omer, but we're also in another seven week period right now. And this is because for seven straight weeks, starting with the Haftorah of Nachmu, Nachmu Ami, console, console my people, which we read after Tishabav, for the next for seven weeks, the Haftorah, each week is a Haftorah of consolation, hope, optimism. And it's very important to connect to this. Because after Tisha B'av, the sages set these seven weeks that we should feel the consolation. 
So all of these time periods, I'm gonna be adding more now, they're all happening and some are overlapping, but each one has a meaning to it. Each one can inspire us and each one grounds us in the time, living with the times. So this is a time of consolation. But if, we, if we're not aware that we're in that cycle, then we don't really feel it. But if we're aware that we're in the cycle of consolation, then it has meaning to us. Then on Rosh Chodesh Elo, we begin another 40-day period. And this one is, is, is more well-known. And those are the 40 days from Rosh Chodesh Elo through Yom Kippur. These are 40 days. And this is hinted to in the acronym for Elo. The first letters of the four words of Ani Ledodi, Ledodi Li. This spells out Elo. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. Again, this 40 day period is connected to this idea that 40 days before the, before the conception of the fetus, a, a voice comes out of heaven, in a sense, matching souls together. So the 40 days, and we begin it with, I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. So these, this is a 40-day period. Where is it hinted to? If you look at the last letter of, of these four words, ani, the last letter is a yud, Lidodi, another yud, vidodi, another yud, li, a fourth yud. Yud equals 10, four times 10 equals 40. And the last word, li, lamed equals 30, yud equals 10. This hints to the 30 days of Elo and the 10 days of Shuva. So this acronym goes with us for the next 40 days. It's, it, it's a meditation that one could do every day for 40 days. Ani ledodi ledodi li. Then, we have a, a cycle of 10 days. That is from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. Now that's part of the 40 days, but it has its own energy. This, this is called the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the 10 days of Tshuva. And why this is very important is if a person's not careful, let's say we pour out our hearts on Rosh Hashanah, and we just were really there and everything. Well, it, it's very inspiring, but it's also somewhat tiring. And a lot of people, we, we finish with Rosh Hashanah, and then we kind of have a collective like, whew, and, we re, and, and we don't realize we're only at the beginning of the 10 days of tshuva. Sometimes we think, ah, we did it all on Rosh Hashanah. But what about the 10 days of tshuva? And then, and then we go through those days and then we, and then Arab Yom Kippur is like, oh, whoa, okay. Yom Kippur is here already. So I'm just saying that this is a 10 day cycle. It's a 10 day context in which we have to be very, very aware of continuing that energy from Rosh Hashanah. Okay, then, we have a seven day period. And that, are, that is the seven days of Sukkot. And this becomes a, a, like a world in itself. When we finish Yom Kippur, we're done with the 40 days of Tshuva, uh, excuse me, the 10 days of Tshuva. We're done with the 40 days from Elul to Yom Kippur. We're done with the days from Tshuva Av till Rosh Hashanah. And then there's four days in between, and then we have seven days of Sukkot. And there's a significance here because of the Yushpizim. Each day of, the, of, of Sukkot, we're inviting one of the Yushpizim, and each 
of the Ushpizin relates to one of the seven lower spherot. And so the energy of the, the seven lower spherot is very, very prevalent during Sukkot. And not only that, but every time we shake the lulav, we're shaking to six directions, but we're bringing it in each time. So that's the seventh. This is a whole teaching of its own. If anyone has the book from Rob Ginsburg, Living in Divine Space, there's an entire book about the, the, the meditative power of the six directions and the bringing it in to the heart. That would be a whole other subject. But my point is that this is a, an important cycle, the seven days. It's not just like the first day of sukkah, and then there's a second day of sukkah, and then there's a third day of sukkah. But because we're so focused on the ushpizing of the day, each meal we invite, Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, and David. And each one of those is connected to the spherot. And when we're shaking lulav, we're very aware of the six directions and the seventh direction of bringing it into the heart. So that is a cycle in of itself. Now, I'm gonna end with two bigger cycles. Which, which has a beautiful hint to it. From Rosh Chodesh Elo until Hoshana Rabbah is 51 days. So what's the significance of that? So the seventh day of Sukkot is, has a special name to it, Hoshana Rabbah. Because each day of Sukkot, except for Shabbat, even though we say, but we don't, circle one time the Beit Knesset. And then on Hoshana Rabbah, we do seven hakafot. And then of course on Simchas Torah, again, we do seven hakafot at night and seven hakafot in the morning. So on Hoshana Rabbah, it, Hoshana is what we, all of the, the hakafot, are enunciating. In other words, each one we go through the 22 letters and there's different concepts and words for each of the letters. But each one we, we, we begin and end with Hoshana, please save. And we say it like many, many times on Hoshana Rabba. Hoshana, Hoshana. So na, hosha, it's actually two words. We say it as if it's one word, hosha, na, but it's really two words, hosha, na, please save. Na means please, please save. Na equals 51. So the 51st day after Rosh Chodesh Elul is hoshana, rabba. So it's a beautiful little hint there. And then the end of the whole cycle, because this is the biggest cycle, even though we start with Rosh Chodesh Ella, but we don't really finish it until Simchas Torah. So the, the Simchas Torah, now this is in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, Shmini Yitzaret and Simchas Torah is the same day. In Chutz Oretz, it's two days. The first day is called Shemini Yitzaret, and the second day of Chag is called Simchas Torah. But in Eretz Yisrael, where the holidays are, is, is the central focus. So what do we say before every Hakafa? Ana Hashem Hoshana Na. So we have the Hoshana, but we begin Ana Hashem which also means please, but Ana equals 52, and Shemini Yitzhak and Simchas Torah is this 52nd day. So here you have the big cycle from Rosh, from, uh, um, Rosh Chodesh Elo 
all the way through Simcha's Torah is 52 days. And it's one continuum. It's one long continuum. So I skipped over one important cycle. And that we already learned last week, but I'm going to repeat it again, is that it's the 22-day cycle from Rosh Hashanah through Simcha's Torah. It's exactly 22 days. And we learned that from Yud Zayin B'Tamuz, the fast day of the 17th of Tammuz, through Tisha B'Av, the fast day of the 9th of Av, is also 22 days. And we explained from the Slonim Rebbe, who said that the 22 days of uh, Bena Mitzarim, the three weeks, is when we draw the outline of the year. And the 22 days from Rosh Hashanah through Simcha's Torah is when we color in the year. And 22, of course, are the 22 Hebrew letters. So here we learn something very important that from Rosh Hashanah, through Simcha's Torah is, it's one flow. It's 22 days, it's from, like we say in English, from A to Z, from Aleph Ad Tav. It's the whole, it's the whole cycle. And the two days of Rosh Hashanah, the Zohar calls it Yom Da'arichta, one long day, even though it's two days, but the Zohar says, Yom it's like one long day. But on a deeper level, and this is a very, very important statement, from Rosh Hashanah through Simcha's Torah is like one long day. It's one day. And my next statement is also is very, very important. Many people, when we finish Yom Kippur, Okay, we're done with Elo. We're done with uh, Aseret Yemei Tshuva. Ah, then we have a holiday called Sukkot. As if it's like a complete, it, it, that's just when the holiday is. That is that's a complete misnomer. The, the Tshuva of Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur continues through Sukkot. And we know that because Hoshana Rabbah, the minhag in Hasidic communities, is many men wear their kittel again. We do the Nusach of, of Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur. We do Psuke to Zimra as if it's a holiday. And um, there's, a, there's a minhag in, 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 in Babav that we learned. And, and we do every year is when you finish each hakafa and Oshana Rabbah, you blow the shofar to tie all of the holidays together. And that's why it's a, it's a uh, teaching from the Nevi'im Arishonim, from the first prophets, that the final sealing does not happen in Yom Kippur, even though we, there is a certain type of ceiling that happens at Ni'ila, but we're told it's really on Hoshana Rabbah. So that means that during Sukkot, even though it's the days of our joy, it's um, Simcha Beta Shoeva, Zman Simcha Tenu, the days of our joy, but it's doing Tshuva from Ahava, from, from, from Simcha. And it's brought down in, in all the Hasidic svarim, that the, the, the shaking lulav on Sukkot is, is, in a sense, deeper than the davening of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And that's the whole symbolism of we take it in our hands. In a sense, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's as if we're saying, God, everything is in your hands. I mean, we'll, we, we will do our tshuva, but our lives are in your hands. Our neshamas are in your hands. 
And Hasidus teaches it's as if God says in Sukkot, that's true, but it's also in your hands. And that's the whole symbolism of taking lulav and etrog in our hands. And when we shake lulav and etrog, it's true, you can, you can do the mitzvah in one minute. You can actually do it in 20 seconds. <laughs> but this is one of the deepest davenings of the whole year is, is when shaking lulav, because it's in our hands. And what we do is we take all of our, our dreams, our New Year's resolutions, our hopes, our tshuva, our prayers from the beginning of Elo, and we take them into our hands. And when we shake out, it's, it's like we have to put it into the world. And then we also have to draw the strength from Hashem to be able to do it. So this is the kitsur, the importance of these 22 days, that when we finish Yom Kippur, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done until the end of Sim Simchat Torah. And in many places, Simchat Torah is it's, it's, it's full of joy, but sometimes it gets very wild and, you know, like turns into fun. But by the Hasidim, the dancing on Simcha's Torah was not, it wasn't fun. It was like the deepest of the deep. Because what are you thinking about when you're dancing? This is the end of the 22 days. This is, this is it. This is, this is it. The year begins. So I want to end with a blessing that we're aware of this idea of living with the times. We, we, can, we do this through the whole year. We connect to the Parsha, we connect to whatever holiday is coming, but there's no doubt that this time of year, there is so many different um, parallel cycles that are happening, that this is a good training for the rest of the year to realize that we have a cycle of 40, a cycle of 45, a cycle of 22, cycle of seven weeks, seven days, um, 51, 52. All of these are happening simultaneously and they're all important and they all can give us a deep context to the process of, of tshuva that we're going through. So I wanna bless everyone with a uh, Shana Tova, Ketiva, Vachatima Tova.